Assalamu alaikum friends and welcome back to the channel always with you Sharfavi and in this video we are going to see how we can automate the creation of the network layer in our Android project using Open API. Let's get started. So Open API is an initiative like it's like Swagger like in which the backend will describe their API, their endpoint and everything with a specific format that is called Open API specification. Okay, it is a standard for describing APIs. Now, the beauty with something like that is that you can get this file, which is the open API spec, and give it to some kind of generator. This will automate the process of creating the network layer. For example, in our case, we can use Retrofit, and using this file, we can automate all the creation to create a Retrofit client. We don't have to code anything manually. This is the beauty. Let's take this example. For example, GitHub to have this REST API description. It's in Open API. If you go to this file, you are going to see that it's pretty big. Here is an example of it. So it has many, many, many endpoints, like 10, just almost 10 megabyte of YML file. Right, so you can see here it has many endpoints, and each endpoint it will tell you this. For example, this is a get summary of API road. For example, what are the parameters? What are the responses? The content of those responses, headers, API keys, like many things. I are going to use this API, but this API is kind of too big, so I kind of restrict it only to the user API. So in which we can tell GitHub, give me the information about this user. It will give me the response back of that user. All right. So I'm just constraining. So here is the example. In my case, I just copied what I needed from this API. So this is the open API spec. It is in YML file. There is another format, which is JSON. Also, this is fine, right? So here, for example, this is the username, the path, and there is a summary. This will help us later on to generate good client. So what are the parameters, the responses, and stuff like that? Like, I only need only this stuff in order to give a good example, right? So you are going to put this somewhere in your Android project, and then we need a generator. There is family of generator on this website, OpenAPI Generator. Here you can go to generators here, you are going to see many generators for almost all the languages. Like not all the languages are very mature, like sometimes there will be some errors in that generator because of something specific to Kotlin or the programming language. But you can go here, for example, to Kotlin, where is it Kotlin? And here you are going to see what is the different parameters you can set up this thing. And also the same documentation exists on GitHub if you want to see it via GitHub. All right, so I'm going to see it in order to introduce certain stuff. So the first thing we need to add plugin, which is a Gradle plugin that will automate this stuff. I have a main activity, simple main activity. We are not going to create any UI right now. We are going just to use the retrofit client in order to get the response. We are going to automate that. And here I'm having simple retrofit client with the interceptor in which we are going to see the things and also converter factory using JSON. I added already the dependencies here. The dependencies I'm using bundle of retrofit. Here you can see that in retrofit, I'm using the following retrofit core, converters, okay, HTTP, logging, and JSON. Okay, I put everything under a simple bundle. This is beauty of using this bundles. So let's first add the plugin. Let me increase the size. So first we need to add the plugin of Open API. So here is the plugin. We are going to add the plugin like the following. It's a plugin and also we need the version. So here is the version of the plugin. Then we need to apply this plugin into Gradle files. So here we need to apply it like the following, like that. And also we need to apply it in the root project file. We need to actually not apply it but just for like, okay, with this, I think we can add the plugin. How do you know we added the plugin correctly? Well, let's wait. So let's close everything and focus on that file. Let's focus on the app here. So here you can see, you can add something called Open API. If you can add Open API Generate, it means you added the plugin successfully. Now here we need to set up the plugin for certain things. Before that, you need to add the file of the YML file here. So I already added it in the project. Right, you can add it to your specific module or something like that. Okay, let's keep it like that project because we are going to add several stuff. So here we need to add certain things. First, we need to tell it what is the input file, okay, which is input spec. Here it works by property, like you can't assign stuff. It works with properties. It means you need to set everything. So just give it the path, which is in our case the root, the root slash API dot YML file. Okay, that's it. Then. In many cases, there is validation of the API spec. Sometimes it doesn't work, so I always skip the validation like that and also set it to true. Sorry, set it to true because I'm skipping it. Then for this example, we are going to use generator of Kotlin. It means you need to give it the generator name, which is Kotlin, like that. Then you need to tell it which client you are using. In our case, which is Retrofit, because Retrofit will be our library in order to 
do this network or actually it will use okay HTTP under the hood but uh, retrofit is the thing so you need to tell it what is the library the library is specific you need to go here or to this one and search for the different parameters you can go here to the library and see there is ktor there is java line i think this is kotlin server sorry we don't need kotlin server we need our normal kotlin so here go to kotlin like that and here search for the library and the library you are going to use is gvm retrofit just copy it and set its name like that okay then you can also specify certain stuff such as the serialization library and whether to use coroutines or not but this doesn't work because if you go here and search for example for serialization library for example it, you can work with json jackson for example kotlin serialization or moshi moshi is the default make sure here is that if you want to use moshi default will be moshi you need to add the dependencies for moshi it doesn't work just like that okay so, but if you try to use serialization library like that, it won't work. There isn't any property called serialization library. Most of these properties that you don't find, you are going to find them in the documentation, but they are not accessible here in the DSL. So you need to add them like the following. There is a common thing called config option in which it accepts a map. So you do the sets and then you put a map off like that. And then you give it all the parameters as string to string. Okay, because if you see it here, it is entry string to string, as you can see. So here I'm going to put the first one, which is serialization library to json i'm going to use json as serialization library then there is other stuff such as using coroutines i think the property called use who routines like that and also when if you want to give it true you need to put it between true i think it's like that for use coroutines yeah use coroutines and by default it is false so i'm going to use the true and coroutines like that just to make sure and with this i think this is fine for the moment we can sync just sync the project and clean let me just clean the project before i do anything now you need to generate and see whether it will work or not so you go here to our gradle or you can do it via the command line and do a open api generate you run this task you need to see whether you are able to generate or not okay this is fine how do you know it works correctly or not go here and go to your build here you will see something called generate resources and here go to crc main you need to see the api in the api it should be called user api and right now as you can see we have one function that is called get user by name automatically generated for us we didn't do anything that's the beauty now if you want to use this library actually now there is a couple of things we need to automate this generate part so what I want is that whenever I build my application, the generation will happen automatically, okay? So this it has to do with Gradle tasks. The way to do it is like the following, but before that, we need also to access this folder because right now, if you go to the main activity, you can't actually call something called user API. There isn't anything as users API, okay? You can't access that. It's because the build folder isn't accessible by our CRC. So we need to add that first, right? So first we need to add Kotlin like that. And inside Kotlin, we need to tell it about the source sets. Here in the source sets, we need to do for the main part like that. And inside the main, we need to tell it kotlin.crc there. We need to add stuff. So it will be like the following. There is layout stuff called build directory because you are accessing it via the build directory and here you can see that it is in the generate resource in the main at crc so we need to add it like the follow generate resource main crc this actually is a property right exactly it's a property so you need to do a get in order to get the directory like that so with this if you sync your project right now this will be accessible okay see it has specific stuff it is main right now it means i can access this user api now there is one problem you can see here is that we are using this package name. You can actually override this package name using the following. You can go here and inside this thing, you can add the following. I think it's called package something, package name like that. Always set it. And here, for example, I'm going to name it com.youtube.openapi. Also, if you notice here, you are going to see in the CRC that there are tests. If you want those tests, okay, see, there is problem with those tests here, as you can see. I don't want to add those tests, so let's not generate that. Also, let me stop that. So there is property called generate API test. I will set it to false. And also generate model test. I will set it also to false. So sync all of that. So this later on, when we build it, we don't have this thing. Now, whenever we are running Kotlin compilation, whenever we're running our project, we need to generate this thing. We need to launch this task of open API generate. We do it like the following. We get all the tasks and here, we want the tasks that are with specific type, which is called Kotlin compile type. Okay, there are two here. And for this one, we are going to do configure H, and then we are going to depend on specific task, which is 
open API change. Just copy the name and paste it here. All right, right now, if I, for example, clean the project, it means all of this will be lost and I will try to run the app. I will just run the app. Okay, of course, let me sync the project. It didn't sync it. And let's run the app right now. We will see a folder here called build CRC, like the build for the user API. Okay, or you can do it like that. There is one issue. Okay, fine. This is a problem because I forget to do so. Just rerun it. Here you will see the folder. It has been generated as you can see, and you are going to see with this one user API with this specific package, as you can see. So this is how you can generate the client from the open API. Now we need to see if it will work or not. So I'm going to use a simple launched effect here in order to run it. I need some purity and stuff. And here I have a retrofit client. I will use it in order to create something called user API, this one. From this user API, I'm going to create client. And with this user API, I can access one function called get user by name, right? Here I will pass my username, which is Yunus Sharfavi, like that. This will give us a result. I will just output this result. All right, let's run it. Okay, it won't work because here in the retrofit, I need to set up what is the base URL. In our case, it is specific, which is this one, up API github.com. Now, if you run it, so here, if you go to the lockout, I can switch here and I can do the following. Let me just make it smaller. Here you can see that we are actually doing a request for this user username and you are getting a response. This is the encoded response from OK HTTP. Let me just do compact view. This is from OK HTTP logger, all right? So this is the result, all of those results. And here you are going to see the response. Here is the response. So you can see that you are able to call the API with something auto-generated, okay? So the next time, whenever you are working with the backend team, tell them if they can offer this kind of open API spec so you can automate this part of creating the network layer. You can go further actually by setting some custom automation. You can even like set up a listener or maybe some GitHub hook or something on the repository of the backend. Whenever they create a new version of the open API spec, you will kind of open a PR in your repository, something like depend about or renovate. Whenever there is a new version of some dependency, it will open a PR and update that version for you. You can do the same actually by updating this open uh, API spec like that because so a lot of time this will be updated. So you can create PRs like that automatically whenever there is like this will require something between the backend and between your project, right? Your Android repository. And this would be massive boost for your productivity as developer. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.